From the very beginning, when Pedro Menendez landed in 1565, free and enslaved Africans contributed to the protection and survival of early St. Augustine. When it came time to build a stronger fortress, Africans, both free and enslaved, were part of the diverse labor force that constructed Castilla de San Marcos. And when it came to defending the city, as early as 1683, free black militiamen were part of the city's military defenses. During this period, there were distinct differences between the British system of chattel slavery, in which the enslaved were considered mere property, and the Spanish system, which upheld certain legal human rights, including opportunities to purchase one's own freedom. It was also during these years that the story of the Underground Railroad began. British enslaved Africans in Carolina learned about the protections of the religious and military systems in Spanish Florida and sought their freedom by traveling south. In 1687, the first recorded fugitive slaves from the Carolina colony arrived in St. Augustine. Governor Quiroga granted their request to be baptized and married in the Catholic Church and found them paid employment in his home and building the Castillo. More and more fugitives arrived, and in 1693, King Charles II officially proclaimed that English runaway slaves would be given liberty, reinforcing St. Augustine's reputation as a destination for freedom. As a result, in 1738, Governor Montiano established Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mose, the first legally sanctioned free black settlement in what is today the United States. The residents of Mose would convert to Catholicism and pledge allegiance to the King of Spain. The fort's free black militia served as the first line of defense against the British, and the entire settlement followed the leadership of a formerly enslaved Mandingo named Francisco Menendez. Just two years later, British Governor James Oglethorpe invaded St. Augustine. And during what is remembered as the Battle of Bloody Mose, the freedmen fought as they had sworn to the last drop of blood against the invading British, who would likely capture and return them to slavery. In the process, Fort Mose was destroyed. But in the end, the British were unsuccessful in taking St. Augustine and retreated. The men and women of Mose had proven themselves to be staunch defenders of the city of St. Augustine and the Castillo. With their home destroyed, the Mose residents spent the next 12 years living amongst the Spanish in their city, further integrating the uniquely diverse society of St. Augustine. In 1752, Mose was rebuilt and the former inhabitants reluctantly returned to their designated village. Parish registers record children being born of free men of Mose and enslaved women still living in St. Augustine, so strong family ties between the communities were still being maintained. However, in 1763, Spain surrendered Florida to the British through the Treaty of Paris that ended the French and Indian War. The people of St. Augustine evacuated to Cuba, including the inhabitants of Mose. Florida was not a haven for freedom seekers during its years of British occupation. But when Spain returned to the territory after the end of the American Revolution, so did its policy of offering freedom to people escaping enslavement. Eventually, under pressure from the new United States, the Spanish crown abandoned its policy of sanctuary to runaway slaves. The freedmen living in St. Augustine at the time did not lose their status, and the governors of Florida continued to rely heavily on their black militias. The Mose settlement would eventually be abandoned and fall into ruin. Now it can be visited as Fort Mose Historic State Park and showcases an interpretive museum and regular living history events. Today, the Castillo remains remarkably unchanged from the time when enslaved Africans made the perilous journey from British colonies to find freedom in Florida. For some, it symbolizes a journey to move forward despite hardships. What does it mean to you?